And here it is guys, the Evolve Carbon Gen 1 four-wheel direct drive board finished. Now I know some of you guys have been waiting a little while for this video and I apologize, there is a reason for that and I'll tell you all about that in a minute. But it is done guys, completely finished and it looks absolutely fantastic. Now I know what you're thinking. Lee, you've skipped forward a little bit here. The last time we saw you, you just finished the battery and you're about to attach the BMS and you would be correct guys. I have skipped forward because guess what? I recorded this entire video with the wrong settings on my camera. So it was all, it's, it's all, yeah, it's all gone. So, well, basically gone. We're gonna redo it now. There's a lot to talk about guys. So getting straight into it, the first thing we did is we, after doing the battery, we fitted the BMS and we did the charge port, just a little bit of soldering. And if you haven't, uh, if you don't know how to do that and you haven't seen my video, check out my ultimate BMS guide. It's a really, really useful video for attaching BMSs to batteries. So we did that, we got that done. And then yes, next up was the machining phase of this board. Quite a few parts to make from scratch for this. So it was really interesting to dive into that and do some stuff that I've never done before myself being a very, very amateur machinist. It was super interesting to get into this. The first thing we had to do, and if you guys can remember that little white adapter I showed you, we had to make some push fit adapters to fit the Tramper Superstars onto the Elofty Direct Drives because there isn't currently an adapter available to do that. So we made these from scratch from POM based off of that design that I told you is exactly the same actually. I just bought a nice block of, of POM, of Delrin, and we set to work on the CNC machine cutting these out. They came out really, really well. I'm super surprised with myself and impressed. These are a little bit experimental, guys. Will they last? I think that potentially they should do. I don't know though. I've spoken to Ricardo about this and told him I think they'll work, but if they don't, we'll have to make them out of aluminium which is going to be significantly more money. So we went for POM as a kind of cost versus durability thing. I think they'll be totally fine, especially since this is four wheel drive and these motors can't actually pull that much current due to those really, really skinny phase wires. Once they were bolted up, and I don't have any footage of this, but the bearings did not fit the axles. Now we've seen this before. Do you remember when Mo got himself some Elofty direct drives ages ago, the, the, the axles were too big for the bearings? Same thing again. Now, I could have sanded four axles down, hardened steel axles, but I could not be bothered. I didn't have the time. So what I actually did is I enlarged the hole in the bearings instead, put them on. That does mean that if Ricardo needs to change the bearings, he's gonna have to do the same again also, or he can sand the axles down. That's totally up to him. There is a kind of a cost uh, thing going on here. Obviously, I don't wanna charge so much money for this board but it would have just taken hours to sand those axles down. Don't really have the time. So anyway, we did that, got them bolted up, job done. Checked that the board turned on uh, with one power switch, which it did. And we went through motor detection, all good. Apart from the front left wheel, the sensor port does not work. Brand new Unity, sensor port does not work. That runs uncensored now. I did a bit of messing around and swapping over and discovered it was the sensor port on the Unity. Ricardo has been in touch with Jason to try and get that sorted out. It's something I don't want to be involved in, so I've just sort of stepped back. This is fine to ride, really. It's just one wheel out of four uncensored. Um, and if Ricardo gets another Unity in the future, we'll swap it over for him, no problems. Then we were on a bit of a roll with the machining. So it was time to make an eight millimeter spacer for the enclosure, the lid to fit to the deck. Because obviously we've gone to 18650s, um, you need a bit of a spacer. So that was decided that I'd make that out of HDPE, which I did. And guess what? My CNC machine is 10 millimeters, 10 millimeters too short to be able to machine this in one piece. I was devastated. So we did it in two pieces in the end, but it's come out really, really nicely. 
and it's HDP, so it's like sort of quite oily and waterproof and a little bit squishy. So actually it makes a really nice seal with a new weather strip that we've put on the board as well. So that's come out really, really nice. And then at that point, we had a massive pause. And the reason for that is, I don't know if you guys remember the lid, but it had some holes cut out of it. It wasn't in the best state. Well, we managed to track down another Evolve Carbon Gen 1 and these things, there's not too many of them about guys, so they're not easy to find. We found another one with another lid and uh, we took the lid off of that and put it onto this. It's over there at the minute. I don't know what we're gonna do with that, but now this has got a, a much better lid with no holes on it. And that was what the wait was for really we were waiting for ages for that to come from America. I mean, it's understandable and it was over Christmas and all that, but it's here. We got it bolted up, job done. Then came a few more machining jobs. The standard carbon has a charge port and has a circuit board bolted to the side of the enclosure. And there's a power switch and an LED there as standard. Now I looked at that and I wanted to make that into something a bit nicer. So we fitted the Unity switch where the old charge port was because those old charge ports can only handle four amps anyway, the old DC jack ones. And then I made a custom plate to hold the brand new charge port, which can take up to 13 amps and bolted all that and using the existing holes that to make the hole in the deck a little bit bigger. But I think that this looks much better than any other way we could have done it and it allows us to use a seven amp charger on this battery so that's really really nice and i'm really proud and impressed with the way that came out and then my favorite part of the job was it was time to make a new heatsink really we're not using the heatsink as a heatsink because there's two unities in here four motors that aren't going to run particularly high amps they're not going to get hot and it was nicer to reconfigure the space for the smart bms so the standard heatsink, this thing, uh, had to go really because it has these holes in it where the old Evolve uh, ESC would have bolted to. And obviously without having that there, there would have been holes in the, in the heatsink that could have let water in. So I decided to machine, very, very simple, machine a flat plate and it came out really, really nicely. Um, first time I've done like a facing operation on a metal plate to make it look really, really smart and it does, it looks absolutely superb. So I was well chuffed with the way that came out and that's now sitting on the bottom of the deck really, really nicely. The best thing about that is you can just remove these four bolts and you get access to the BMS, the charge port fuse and a few other bits and pieces in there so that if you did have to access some stuff in this board, you don't have to take the full enclosure off, which is really, really nice. And then lastly, really, it was just a case of extending the uh, receiver wires so that we could put the receiver back in the tail with the OEM cover on the back, which we took off the new board. And I made like a little TPU 3D printed gasket for that wire on the back of the board. And really guys, that is it, it is done. I've taken it for a little test ride and um, the other day, and it was interesting. I don't like DKPs. Well, it's probably unfair. I don't like Evolve DKPs, which are the only DKPs I've tried before. These are lofty ones also felt super sketch. And having the four wheel drive on them, you know that DKP thing where you turn, but then the DKPs make you turn even more. Couple that with powered front wheels and it gets super interesting. I can't wait to see Ricardo um, ride this board because he's going to be able to do something with it. He has advised me that the, the bushings on these trucks are probably crap, which is probably right and I might need to change those out. But before Ricardo gets on it, I have to ride it and see what it's like. So let's get suited up. Let's get outside and let's go for a test ride. one day it snows i'd love to take this out in the snow you think four-wheel drive that might be quite interesting in the snow with these slick tires not my board really it's not worth it guys so we'll get out for a test ride on this next week which i'll video for you 
and I'll give you my thoughts on how this rides. It's super interesting because obviously the X-Way Atlas is about to drop and that has four wheel drive DKPs on it. So it's gonna be very, very similar uh, to the way that that steer. So I'm super looking forward to riding this, but until then, we're gonna to have to wait. Thank you very much for watching guys and I'll see you on the next one. Yeah,